I was this vine with this big purple flower on it. It was like all technicolor neon, right? And I was just rising above. There's a flash of me sitting back there all huddled over there smoking and feeling horrible. My father was abusive, but he's a sad, pathetic old man and I am this vine rising up and all powerful. So all my problems are laid out there, all small and stupid. I just was like, why would you ever choose to smoke? I mean, I could smoke if I want to, but why? That is so incredible to me. Like, I, it was an incredible. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really great experience. Kathy's psychedelic trip wasn't just for fun. It was part of a recent experiment to see if magic mushrooms can help people stop smoking. Did you try a couple, like quitting a couple times before you entered the study? Well, I tried the white knuckling, just quitting. I tried the patches, I tried the gum. Nothing worked. I kind of was very depressed, like I thought I was never gonna be able to quit. But she did quit after her psychedelic trip. Now, she hasn't had a cigarette in more than three years. It was a small study, but now a much larger study is underway. The researchers behind it say that psychedelics are much more effective because they treat the root cause of addiction, not just the symptoms. All of the other psychiatric treatments for addictive disorders are really at the surface level. They're like quelling the nicotine receptor. Yeah. And, and so it reduces withdrawal. But we know as a science that withdrawal is not the key to solving addiction. Now, the treatment is actually pretty different from doing shrooms in your dorm. Before using the psychedelics, Kathy and the other participants had to do 15 weeks of intensive therapy, and they had to keep a journal of their smoking triggers. Finally, on the day of the treatment, you come here and take a pill from this chalice. Then you put on headphones and an eye mask, and you basically just lay there all day. You can listen to music and look at art, and two trained guides stay with you the whole time. It usually lasts about five hours. This isn't just replacing one drug with another. Psilocybin is not addictive. But can one trip really change a habit as deeply entrenched as smoking? When you're not doing a specific task, something called the default mode network takes over in the brain. Think of daydreaming. It's just mindless, automatic thinking. With something like addiction or depression, this is also where harmful, repetitive thoughts live inside your head, swirling around and around. No one likes me. I'm never going to be successful. You're just a failure. Well, you see the opposite pattern acutely with psilocybin. I pattern. am awesome, and everybody likes me. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> not necessarily. So, that sounds pretty, like, you know, you know, you know, egotistical, but, but in fact, some people do have experiences like that. It doesn't come out quite like that, but people have experiences where they'll, they'll recognize this profound self-worth. Magic mushrooms disrupt that default mode network by enabling crosstalk. All of a sudden, parts of your brain that don't normally communicate all light up at the same time. More crosstalk between different areas is probably associated with seeing things from a different perspective. It's analogous to, you know, going into the basement of your psyche, knocking the cobwebs away, dealing with that stuff maybe they haven't dealt with for years or decades. Why is it beneficial to sort of clean out your basement or, you know, knock away the cobwebs and to have this sort of mystical experience? I just don't see the connection between that and, say, like quitting cigarettes. The more mystical the experience is, the more they have one of these profound experiences, that would pre that's what predicts the positive long-term benefits, not just having psilocybin. It's not just psilocybin hitting your brain receptors. It's the experience that matters. For Kathy, the treatment helped her see the real reasons for her smoking. She was under stress from work, from parenting, and most of all, from her partner coming out as transgender. My identity was built on being a lesbian, and then my partner came out as transgender, which I guess meant that I wasn't a lesbian if he was really a man. And my oldest child was struggling, and so I felt kind of like a failure as a parent. I had built my identity at work on being a really great CPA, somebody who's great with money, and then we were having money tr troubles. So I was losing financially, losing as a parent, and even losing as a lesbian uh, or as an adult who thought she knew who she was. Now that I've transitioned and I'm who I'm supposed to be, uh, we went and got married at the courthouse. 
I think our relationship has gotten stronger because now not using nicotine as an escape instead of running away and going outside or whatever when you get frustrated. We talk a lot more um, together and work things out as a team more than we used to. My husband and I's relationship has soared, kind of like my session. I mean, this has been really great. And part of that is because he's coming into his own, you know, he's feeling comfortable in his own skin for the first time. He's really becoming the person he's meant to be. And I guess I'm coming to a deeper understanding of myself, you know? I mean, I definitely have thrown away labels. I don't need, I mean, obviously labels are pointless. You know, I'm this, no, I'm this. It's like, I'm just, I just am, right? I just am. And so I'm able to be that.